Good morning students. Welcome to machine learning online class. Today we will discuss the second chapter of your fourth unit. Uh, as we know already we have uh, discussed the first chapter of your fourth unit in your uh, offline class itself. Uh, that is uh, genetic algorithms. So today we will be focusing on uh, the uh, learning sets of rules that is uh, second chapter of your fourth unit. Okay, once we complete this learning sets of rules in today's session, uh, I'll be covering reinforcement learning in one more online session with that we can conclude the fourth unit. Okay. Already classes are going on in your third unit and we have completed the first chapter of your third unit that is Bayesian learning uh, and uh, we also started the computational learning theory and uh, we are about to discuss the uh, topic uh, like uh, the uh, sample complexity for infinite hypothesis. Here we are in your offline classes. So uh, with this, if, if we complete these two topics, the mistake bound uh, learning model as well as the sample complexity for infinite hypothesis spaces, uh, with that we can also conclude the uh, second chapter of uh, third unit. Okay, And uh, the instance based learning, uh, this uh, we will see how it will go. Uh, by the end of this week if if it is possible to cover this concept in offline class uh, i will try to discuss this concept in offline classes only otherwise uh, on weekend uh, that is uh, this coming saturday uh, i will plan another online class to cover up this uh, topic the instance based learning topic okay hopefully with that uh, if we conclude this uh, instance based learning with that we can say we have completed all five units of machine learning okay so let's just uh, go with this uh, learning sets of rules uh, yeah we have topics uh, under this learning sets of rules uh, like uh, first we need to do the introduction uh, introduction to this uh, topic and uh, then uh, the sequential uh, covering algorithms in your fifth uh, unit uh, when we discussed about uh, prolog ebg ebnn kbann all these algorithms we said uh, they are sequential covering algorithms so here you will understand the term sequential covering algorithms what does exactly mean by sequential covering algorithms then uh, we have a learning set uh, learning rule sets uh, uh, how to learn these rule sets using the sequential covering algorithm and that we will discuss and uh, there is a remark and uh, summary on this uh, learning rule sets uh, that also we will discuss then we also discuss the first order rules and we, we differentiate between these rule sets and uh, first order rules the difference between rule sets and uh, first order rules uh, we need to understand and uh, how to learn this uh, first order rules uh, that also we will see here you can see the topic learning uh, first order uh, rules learning sets of first order rules uh, this is uh, this we achieve with the help of an example foil uh, first order in, uh, inductive learner foil stands for first order inductive learner that we will see here and the inverted the induction as inverted deduction and inverting resolutions these two topics also we will there is one formula for this uh, inverting resolution that uh, we will uh, discuss and uh, we will conclude this uh, chapter okay learning sets of rules chapters hopefully so without uh, the ado let's just enter into this uh, learning sets of rules concept and moreover it is also an important topic for your external exams point of view and moreover when we do the uh, another reason for discussing this topic learning sets of rule is uh, when we do the artificial intelligence in our upcoming semester in our next semester uh, in your 3 2 we are having artificial intelligence and uh, uh, for this subject artificial intelligence we have a lab uh, AI and NLP lab we have there the first part the half of the lab part is artificial intelligence related programs and all those programs we do in a programming language called as Prolog. Prolog programming language we use 
and in that prolog programming language only we try to develop the programs for all the problem statements given in artificial intelligence lab okay and uh, this prolog programming language it is uh, unlike your traditional programming languages it is a bit different uh, uh, approach uh, we write programs in a different way in prolog programming language and uh, we in to design the knowledge base to design the knowledge base we use uh, the predicate logic this predicate logic you might be aware from your discrete maths subject the same predicate logics we use uh, for writing these statements or instructions in pro prolog programming language we call them as facts here facts and uh, uh, predicates we call them and in order to frame that uh, facts and rules uh, we use this uh, uh, what we call the prolog programming language or the predicate logic okay so that is also one of the reason for discussing this uh, learning sets of rules so quickly see this uh, um, rules or the predicate logic whatever uh, we use it is one of the uh, best way one of the best way to represent the expressions okay uh, because uh, uh, in other sort of things if we are discussing uh, if we are representing the knowledge in other sort of uh, things we need some kind of knowledge some kind of uh, technical understanding to understand that representation okay but here if we uh, represent the same thing using if then if then rules are the normal rules what we call you will understand what do you mean by rule you will understand very soon so if we uh, express the knowledge in terms of if then rules then you will easily uh, uh, i mean those if then rules they are basically in human readable form so that uh, human readable representation if we use for our knowledge representation uh, it will go very easy to understand okay that is one of the most uh, uh, important reason we can say okay here you can see one of the most expressive and human readable representation for learned hypothesis okay what we represent generally here in the sense a learned hypothesis we represent using uh, a set of if then rules how we are representing the learned hypothesis using a set of uh, uh, if then rules see uh, everywhere uh, whatever kind of algorithm we are applying uh, the learned hypothesis we are representing using a particular approach okay so in in your finders algorithm you have seen some notations we used in your candidate elimination algorithm there also we used some sort of notations in decision tree learning we have seen we have represented the learned approach in the form of uh, uh, a tree okay so here what we do the learned approach or the learned hypothesis uh, we represents with the help of uh, if then rules okay and why it is useful and how it is useful in the sense in many cases it is useful to learn the target function represented as a set of if then rules that jointly define the function okay one way to learn i mean how we can learn this if then rules from the given data in the sense the first way is we need to design a decision tree okay for that uh, given data we need to design i mean we know from our first chapter only we know how to design a decision tree for the given data okay uh, we will calculate the entropy we will calculate the information gain of every attribute and based on the information gain only we will design the decision tree so after designing that uh, decision tree we translate that decision tree in the form of uh, uh, if then rules okay set of rules equivalent set of rules for that decision tree only we form the set of rules and how we form that set of rules in the sense one rule for each leaf node in the tree from the root node till we reach the leaf node we will follow a particular path and that path we represent in the form of a learning approach and that learning approach only we convert into a rule set of rule in this uh, what we call the uh, a learning set of rules approach okay hopefully you understood then a second method is we can use we can also use the genetic algorithm the first chapter of your fourth unit we studied there the genetic algorithm thing and how this genetic algorithm will search a hypothesis uh, using the bit streams 
uh, that we discussed over there. So the same genetic algorithm approach we can apply uh, to learn a hypothesis and that hypothesis can be represented uh, with the help of this if then rules okay these two approaches but none of these two approaches we follow here in this chapter we go in a different way here we explore a variety of algorithm that directly learn rule sets so neither we are going to use the id3 that is your decision tree algorithm or nor we are going to use the genetic uh, algorithms here uh, rather we go in a different way so and these algorithm whatever algorithms we are using here they differ from uh, the algorithms which i discussed in the previous slide okay they differ from these algorithms in the sense here when i am saying these uh, that means the decision tree as well as the genetic algorithm thing okay we are not using decision trees we are not using genetic algorithms rather we are using a different variety of algorithms that directly learn set of rules okay directly learn set of rules first they are designed to learn sets of first order rules that contain variables okay we are going in two different ways okay one approach is to use uh, learn the first order rules okay first order rules are different and normal set of rules is different you you should uh, understand this one okay so to learn the first of first order rules we have one set of algorithms and to to learn the set of rules uh, we have another uh, set of algorithm so what is first order rules in the sense these first order rules will have variables okay that contain variables you just understand this one first order rules in the sense first order rules will contain variables but whereas uh, normal set of rules in the sense they will contain only the constants they will not contain any sort of variables okay this is the basic difference between first order rules and set of rules okay so here uh, they i mean set of rules to learn we apply any of the sequential covering algorithm that learns one rule at a time incrementally grow the final set of rules so for, for learning the set of rules we apply the sequential covering algorithm and in order to learn the first order rules we have to apply the f o i l algorithm first order inductive learner algorithm we need to apply okay so these two approaches we use uh, and they are different than the decision tree learning and the genetic algorithm thing hope you understood okay so an example of that first order rules what do you mean by first order rules as you can see here first order rules when we are saying in the first order rules we have variables x y z all these are variables and this parent ancestor they are predicates okay we call them as predicates and these two are variables okay so and as an example of first order rule set consider the following two rules that jointly describe the target concept ancestor here our target concept is ancestor so whether a person is an ancestor to a second person or not that we are going to identify with the help of these two uh, first order rules okay so first order rules are nothing but if then rules only okay so the predicate parent of xy parent of x comma y when it is written like this it indicates that y is the parent of x okay when you are writing parent of x y parent of x is y like that you oh, take it okay parent of x is y if you take it like this you will understand very easily so what does it mean y is the parent of x so when i am writing parent of x comma z parent of x is z whenever you have comma convert that comma as is and read it like this parent of x is z that means uh, parent of x is z that means z is the parent of x likewise okay the parent the the, the predicate parent of uh, x comma y indicates uh, y is the parent of x that is what it means see here y is the parent of x so the parent of x is y we are saying that means y is the parent of x parent of x is z we are saying so z is the parent of x likewise and the predicate ancestor of x comma y how to read this ancestor of x is y like this you have to read it so that you you will get the meaning 
ancestor of x is y that means y is the ancestor of x okay ancestor in the sense forefathers isn't it uh, uh, our parent parents all that we call them as ancestors our roots okay so likewise so uh, indicates that y is the ancestor the second uh, variable whatever is given here is the ancestor of the first variable that is what the meaning exactly over here here also the same thing the second variable is the parent of first variable likewise the meaning hopefully you understood so here how we can uh, get the target target concept over here in the sense target concept ancestor over here the, in the understanding very clearly it is given uh, and just by reading itself and as i told earlier also in the classroom when we when we were discussing about this uh, prologue ebg at the time also i said these predicates they don't have any code associated like in our regular traditional programming languages whenever we call a function whenever we uh, uh, put a function in our programming whether it is if it is predefined the code the code will be available in header files and if it is user defined the code will be available in the current programming language it's a current program itself but here these predicates they resembles functions isn't it they are same like your functions parent is the function name and x y are arguments passing to that function but they don't have any code associated okay they don't have any code associated here it is just the name parent and x comma y just the variables but the uh, when when they are represented in your knowledge base okay they are going to have some meaning so in order to call them as parents uh, x y uh, x should have some uh, what we call the literals and y should have some kind of literals okay that we will see afterwards so if parent of x comma y then ancestor of x comma y because we already said now x is the parent of sorry y is the parent of x isn't it so automatically if y is the parent of x automatically y will also become an ancestor to x so that's the reason in this particular rule we wrote it like this if x if x is the child of y or if y is the parent of x if y is the parent of x then automatically y will become the ancestor of x okay from the real time only we took this logic now okay in real time also the concept is same okay if you are uh, if uh, if you as a child consider your father uh, of uh, of this relationship parent relationship then automatically your father will also become an ancestor to you isn't it so in that sense only we wrote this uh, uh, what we call the rule first order rule over here so if parent of x comma y automatically uh, uh, ancestor of x comma y and there is another rule to justify this one if parent of x comma z and ancestor of z comma y then automatically this y will become an ancestor to x isn't it because here you can see uh, z is the father or z is the parent of x and y is the parent of z so automatically y if 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 z is male let us assume if z is male then automatically what will happen ma y will become grandfather of x isn't it y will become grandfather of x so y uh, both y z and y are ancestors to this x according to these two logics whatever we have written now z is an ancestor to x as well as y is also an ancestor of x okay hopefully you in the, uh, understood this one and moreover it is a recursive definition as you can see ancestor it is coming both in head as well as in the body so head is something like a call and body is something like a definition so if your uh, function name is coming both in head as well as in the body if your head is uh, coming both uh, if your uh, sorry predicate if your function call is coming both in the head as well as in the body we call it as a recursive call in our traditional uh, programming approaches also the concept is something like that only okay so note the above two rules uh, they describe a recursive function that would be very difficult to represent using a decision tree or other propositional approaches 
so here we are uh, we have represented these type of things i mean these type of knowledge very easily using first order rules which in turn very difficult to represent using id uh, id tree algorithm that is decision tree learning algorithm or any of the other approaches okay so one has to consider the prolog programming language to see the representational power of first order rules already i explained ma where we use this first order rules or normal set of rules in the sense in your prolog programming language and i also said that in while doing your uh, ai programs there we will discuss more in detail about about this uh, prolog programming language so in prolog programs are sets of first order rules so what we put inside a prolog program in the sense we put the first order rules only something like this only similar to this one only whatever we have written as statements here if parent of x comma y then ancestor of x comma y if parent of x comma z and ancestor of uh, z comma y then automatically y will also become the ancestor of x uh, likewise we use these type of representations these type of first order representation first order rule representations only in our prolog program so that is what they have mentioned over here and uh, these rules whatever we kept here these rules we also call them as horn clauses okay so uh, here whatever first order rules we represented now we call them as horn clauses as well okay so yeah what exactly your prolog program consist of that they have mentioned here prolog program uh the same syntax okay slightly different uh, we are saying so, so we should not use the same we have to use the term similar okay with a similar syntax the above rules from a valid prolog program for computing the ancestor relation we can use that same rules for computing the ancestor relation okay so here we explore different learning algorithms capable of learning such rules so whatever first order rules or set of rules we are talking about how to learn those rules from the given sets of training uh, examples generally we have training examples only in hand so from the training examples how to learn the first order rules that is what we are going to discuss i mean what type of algorithms we have to explore okay to explore this first order rules uh, uh, from the given training uh, examples that only we will discuss throughout this chapter so in that the first uh, uh, type of thing first sort of thing is a sequential covering algorithm before we proceed any further before we discuss any uh, specific algorithm uh, the, the the procedure or the uh, what we call the uh, steps we need to understand so all the algorithms whatever we use here they are a uh, type of sequential uh, covering algorithms only okay so what do you mean by sequential uh, covering algorithms that we, we need to understand here sequential covering algorithms are a family of algorithms for learning rule sets okay rule sets based on the strategy of learning one rule so what we do from the given data we try to frame uh, a particular rule okay particular rule we try to frame and uh, after framing the rule once again we check the training data okay and whatever training data is satisfying that rule we simply uh, we simply remove that uh, data from the uh, uh, given data okay so that is what see here how the sequential covering algorithms will work in the sense sequential covering algorithms are a family of algorithms for lear for learning rule sets based on the strategy of learning one rule and removing the data that it covers here when i am saying it it means this one rule only we are framing a rule and uh, whatever data is satisfied by that rule we are simply removing that data from our given data then this process the same process we repeat iteratively until and unless some performance uh, uh, is achieved some sort of performance we initially assume and if that performance is achieved we stop doing this okay we, we we stop doing this iterations so hopefully you understood given the set of data we are framing a particular rule because we are proceeding sequentially from top to bottom in the given data we are proceeding sequentially and one rule at a time one 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 uh, instance at a time we are uh, considering and based on that instance we are framing some rule 
and uh, after framing the rule whatever data from your given data whatever data satisfies that rule we simply removes that data and we repeat this process until and unless we reach some performance measure okay hopefully you understood so this is how your sequential covering algorithms will work okay so to understand this sequential covering algorithms we take we took an example uh, learn one rule okay uh, our uh, function or you can say our predicate i have taken here is learn one rule okay so what it will do it will accept a set of positive and negative training examples as inputs simply it will accept some data some training examples as input and then output a single rule what it will do it will uh, output a rule it will not output any uh, anything rather it will output a rule because we are learning rules only here we are talking about uh, sets of rules okay and i have shown you how those rules will be represented here only i have discussed rules ante em ledamma ila ikkadaithe edaithe form lo manam represent chesamo vitine manam rules antamo okay so manaku ichina data nunchi ee rules ni manam frame cheyali so how we are framing one approach is uh, using uh, sequential covering algorithms and in that we said learn one rule algorithm we are discussing and this learn one rule what it will do it will take some training data both positive and uh, negative examples we will have in the data as input and then it will output a rule a particular rule okay so this rule uh, being a rule what it has to do ma it has to satisfy the training examples it has to satisfy the training example so but here in case in our case what we say is uh, it will uh, see when we are framing this rule uh, it is not compulsory that it has to satisfy all the training examples so that is what ma okay why it is like that we will discuss once again so the output rule um, it is not compulsory that it has to satisfy uh, uh, all the uh, training examples so here you can see Uh, this rule what it will do it covers many of many we are saying not all many of the positive examples and few of the negative examples and why i am saying like that means because we said uh, we are going with a performance measure okay we are going with a performance measure and if it is satisfying all the examples because uh, such a thing uh, in practice it is not possible okay framing a rule framing a single rule which should cover all the training examples uh, practically it is not possible okay so what we do will not go for the 100% accuracy rather we go with uh, some slight uh, uh, deviation okay so that's the reason we are saying many of the positive examples and few of the negative examples it has to cover your rule has to cover okay so we require that this output rule have high accuracy but not necessarily high coverage so what do you mean by high accuracy and high coverage here they have explained see by high accuracy we means the predictions it makes should be correct because if we make our rule to satisfy uh, what we call ba 100% all the training examples then automatically what it what we call it as overfitted rule isn't it it will go overfit so we don't want something which overfit the training data ma because our concern is the testing data or our concern is the unseen data so what we have to we need to make our uh, rule uh, to satisfy many of the Uh, positive examples and a few of the negative examples so when we are saying this we are not saying all that is the reason why we are not saying all so we require our uh, learning uh, learned rule to be high accurate and uh, not necessarily be high high coverage high coverage so by means of high accuracy we mean that uh, predictions it makes uh, on the unseen data should be correct by uh, accepting low coverage we means that it, it 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 should not make predictions for every training example ma training example case lo prati daniki correct avvalsin avasaram ledu kani unseen data paina high accuracy anedi manaku chupiyali that is what our intention so that's the reason whatever rule we are learning learning right we are expecting it to perform good okay to perform good not the best ma. 
not the best on the training data but because if it performs best on the training data there is no guarantee that it will perform best on the uh, unseen data as well so that's the reason we are not making it uh, to overfit on the training data hopefully you understood okay so given one uh, uh, rule learn one rule subroutine for learning a single rule invoke learn one rule on all the very available training example remove any positive examples covered by the rule it learns then invoke it again to learn a second rule based on the remaining training examples so that is what so it, it goes the process goes iteratively sequentially from the first training example to in the last training example okay for every training example what we do we we call this learn one rule subroutine and what it will do it will uh, take that uh, training example and it will return a rule okay and after returning a rule that rule we are testing with other positive examples if any positive example is satisfied by that rule we simply remove it and this process we keep on continue until we reach some performance measure okay this procedure here you can see this procedure can be iterated as many times as desired to learn a disjunctive set of rules that together cover any desired fraction of positive examples okay this is called i mean the approach what we followed in our uh, uh, learning uh, rules learning set of rules uh, we call it as sequential covering algorithm because it sequentially learns a set of rules that together covers the full set of positive examples okay hopefully you understood so the prototypical uh, um, steps they have given for a sequential covering algorithm in the following uh, table you can see here sequential covering what it is taking it is taking the training attribute uh, attributes examples and the threshold here threshold is nothing but your performance you here you can see they wrote as performance over according to performance over example so if the performance is good then only we will stop the uh, learning process okay so initially we are making the learned rules as empty set and every time we are reading only one rule uh, and uh, that rule after reading we are checking its performance over the training example here we have the performance you can see okay we are checking its performance on the training examples if the performance is greater than the threshold okay we are repeating these process these steps and finally we are re returning the learned rules whatever rules we are learning from the sequential covering that we are returning hopefully you understood so to design learn one rule to meet the needs of a sequential covering algorithm we need an algorithm that can formulate a single rule with high accuracy but that need not to cover all the uh, all of the positive examples because accuracy when we are talking about we calculate more or less on the unseen data only because obviously we know uh, if we make our uh, learning approach bound towards the training examples bound towards the given data it will overfit over there you can achieve the 100 percent accuracy but obviously it will get deviated from the unseen data so that is not uh, what our intention we want our learned approach to perform good on the unseen data that's why that's the reason only we are looking for high accuracy on the unseen data but it has not to uh, cover all the positive examples hopefully you understood so general to specific beam search it is also one of the important uh, 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 algorithm uh, beam search algorithm many times they ask this algorithm so one approach i mean whatever we said now here there is a need to design a sequential covering algorithm for this one learn one rule okay to design that learn one rule approach only we are going for a beam search beam search uh, strategy it is a kind of algorithm it is a kind of strategy to implement the learn one rule okay so one approach to implement learn one rule is to organize the hypothesis space search in the same general fashion as in the id3 algorithm and to follow only the most promising branches in the tree at each step so what we do we, one one approach is to design the tree and in that tree we, we have to follow uh, a particular because tree in the sense it will have uh, many branches isn't it so in those branches we need to follow a particular branch uh, which is giving the most promising results okay 
so as illustrated i mean we have a tree representation in our next figure uh, over there you will understand what what i mean by promising branch okay so as illustrated in the search tree of the following figure the search begins by considering the most general rule prediction uh, possible possible the empty test that matches every instance so we start with the most general thing and we move towards the specific thing okay ante manam etla start chestam ante for initially annitini accept chesetattu the way how we did in uh, uh, what we call find as algorithm here also we follow the same approach first we go with the most general case which will accept everything and slowly we make our uh, what we call the learning rule Uh, specific specific towards the uh, target concept okay then greedily adding the attribute test that most improves uh, rules performance measured over the training examples by uh, by testing the um, assumed rule with the training examples we slowly try to uh, speci uh, specialize it slowly we will make it specialized initially we start with uh, the general thing and slowly we will uh, specialize see here initially as i said now we will start with the most uh, general case here you can see the most general case here the empty test condition after if we are not keeping any test condition simply we are saying everything whatever things will happen we are making the play tennis as true only so this is the most general case that means it will accept everything the most general if then rule we can say this is what without any condition without any condition if we make play tennis as true it will accept everything ma all training examples ki manaku outcome em ostundi yes ane ostundi wind ela unna humidity ela unna manaku prati outlook ela unna prati daniki manaku output em ostundi target concept em ostundi yes ane ostundi if we follow this particular rule so now what we are doing slowly we are specializing it so in our first step of beam search as you can see here manam uh, light ni oka particular direction lo uh, focus chesthe elagaithe manaku aa rays oka beam shape lo velthayo that is how we move in in this uh, decision tree branches from top to bottom okay the way how light moves like a beam in that same way we move from the root node till we reach the uh, target node or the leaf node so that's the reason we call it as the beam search okay so here uh, for, for after uh, make after having the most generalized case now we are at the level 0 we are specializing it okay specializing it you can see here if wind equals to weak then only play tennis as true if wind is equals to weak then only play tennis equals to yes if wind equals to strong obviously we need to make the play tennis as no and here if humidity equals to normal then play tennis is equals to yes okay and if humidity equals to high again the play tennis equals to no so from this okay we consider this as the uh, promising uh, branch and we move in this particular direction and uh, now what we do if humidity equals to normal and whatever sub branches we will have from this branch from this node whatever sub branches we will have in all the sub branches the humidity will go normal only as you can see here if humidity equals to normal and here what type of relationship we consider and relationship conjunction relationship okay if humidity equals to normal and wind equals to weak then only we can play if humidity equals to normal and wind equals to strong then also we say play if humidity equals to normal and outlook equals to sorry it is not conjunction uh, i guess it is disjunction somewhere we need to make it as disjunction no era okay so whatever so it should be disjunction okay so if humidity equals to normal or wind equals to weak because if this particular attribute goes to true and whatever the second attribute value we will have obviously we will get the outcome as uh, yes only so that's the reason we are making the uh, we are making our uh, case our rule more specific by adding like this okay so hopefully you understood the way how we are proceeding from root to child in this particular decision tree or in this particular rule uh, post conditions okay uh, <clears throat> yeah that same thing only they have explained in this uh, uh, points and uh, where exactly we stop uh, this particular uh, iterative process in the sense here they have mentioned uh, 
like ID3, the way how we did in ID3, this process grows the hypothesis by greedily adding new attributes. Okay, at every level, at every level, we specialize the uh, tree by adding some new attributes, tests until the hypothesis reaches. I mean, whatever hypothesis we are looking for, if that hypothesis reaches an acceptable level of performance. So here performance measure is the crucial thing uh, in the working of this learn one rule algorithm. Hopefully it is clear for you. So the beam search, how we do here, they have given, I mean, the representation, whatever I have explained over here, the same in the form of an algorithm they have given learn one rule it is taking target attribute attribute examples and k okay so returns a single rule that covers some of the examples again we are saying some only some of the examples conducts a, a general to specific greedy beam search initially we are starting with most general thing general rule and slowly we are specializing it okay by following a greedy beam, beam search for the best rule okay guided by the performance metric and why we are saying it uh, as guided by the performance metric in the sense because whether to continue the next iteration or not based on this performance metric only we are uh, deciding if at all your performance metric is uh, higher than the current performance obviously we need to go for uh, another uh, iterative approach if at all we are getting for any particular uh, uh, training training set if at all we are getting the performance measure as the lowest than the current one obviously we need to stop the search okay so learning first order rules so in previous discussion i mean whatever discussion we did up to now like learning one rule discussion there we have learned the uh, sets of propositionals only okay what do you mean by sets of propositionals or sets of normal rules in the sense they are variable free more or less they are like constants they are holding constants see wind is equals to weak humidity equals to uh, all these whatever we mentioned over here all these are like constants only okay but in the first order rules what we do is we will use variables okay so that is what the difference between normal rules and uh, 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 first order rules Okay. In the previous section, we discussed the algorithms for learning set of propositionals, that is variable free rules. Uh, now, here we consider the learning rules that contain variables in particular. So, here uh, the rules will have the variables. If they have the variables, we call them as uh, first order rules or first order horn classes. Okay. So, our motivation for considering such rules is that they are much more expressive and propo than propositional rules. And why we are going for this uh, first order rules, even though we have the uh, normal sets of rules, sets, sets of uh, propositionals in the sense, uh, because this uh, first order rules, they are more expressive than the propositional rules. Okay. So, inductive learning of first order rules or theories is often referred to as inductive logic programming or in short we can call it as lp logic programming or lp so in prolog whatever we do now in prolog programs whatever we do now it is logic programming only lp only okay because this process can be viewed as uh, uh, automatically inferring prolog programs from example so what what this uh, process whatever process we are discussing over here what we are exactly doing means it is narrating the programming uh, prolog programming statements okay this uh, logic programming statements from the given examples okay so prolog it is a general purpose programming language uh, turing equivalent programming language in which programs are expressed as a collection of horn clauses already i told you whatever we represent in the prolog programming language the statements the expressions they are more or less like uh, the first order horn clauses only okay first order horn clauses so to understand the advantage of uh, first order representation over the propositional propositional means variable free first order means with variables okay consider the task of learning the sample target concept sample target concept daughter of x comma y so here we are considering previously we have seen ancestor of x comma y 
when the target concept will go true uh, we have seen so now we are learning another type of uh, target concept that is uh, daughter of x comma y so here what does it mean by da daughter of x comma y so generally if you read daughter of x comma y like this uh, we'll assume that um, i mean it will give the meaning that uh, we are looking for the daughter of x comma y but actually the meaning over here is when when you see a predicate like this when you see a predicate like this daughter of x is y okay whatever target we are looking for that is y okay and whatever parent we are looking for that is x so daughter of x is y okay if you read like this it will give the meaning defined over pairs of people x comma y the value of daughter of x comma y is true when this will when this predicate will become true in the sense when x is the daughter of y okay when this particular x we are having a daughter of uh, x is y otherwise false okay so likewise you can take uh, suppose each person in the data is described by the attributes name mother father gender because we are saying daughter so gender also we are considering male female so every attribute in the data set every person details we are maintaining with this uh, attributes okay name mother father male female hence each training example will consist of the description of two people in terms of these attributes so by using these attributes only we are going to describe each person in the data okay and uh, not just these attributes along with their uh, values also okay so here you can see name one equals to uh, sharon uh, sharon is the obviously it is a female feminine name sharon and uh, mother of uh, here when we are saying one uh, we are talking about the first person here you can see where the subscript subscript is nothing but this one two uh, on each attribute uh, attribute name indicates which of the two pe people or which of the two persons is being described so when when we are seeing one over here we are talking about the first person and when we are seeing two here we are talking about a second person so name one so the first person name is uh, uh, sharon and uh, sharon's mother mother one is louise sharon's father is bob and uh, uh, is sharon male in the sense false no is sharon female in the sense true yes same thing name two second person's name is bob and second person's mother uh, not of our concern mother two equals to nora second person's father victor uh, second second person's gender male uh, two is true because he's a male uh, then female two second person is he female no false and uh, daughter of one comma two okay uh, daughter of one comma two in the sense one is the daughter of two okay one is the daughter of two likewise if it is true okay so here you can see if then uh, uh, rules we are writing from that uh, given data so to collect a number of such training examples for the target concept daughter of one two uh, daughter of one two is our target concept and provide them to a propose a propositional rule uh, learner such as cn2 or c 4.5 uh, the result would be a collection of very specific rules such as see here if i mean it is more specific case okay it is more specific case and these type of specific cases are used in cn2 and c 4.5 these two are also algorithm names okay in I, and these uh, uh, algorithms are used to learn the propositional rules and this is one such propositional rule only here no variables are used as you can see in this uh, if then rule no variables are used all are like specific literals specific constants so that's the reason we are calling them uh, we are we are uh, calling it as a propositional rule you can see if father one equals to bob and name two is equals to bob female one is equals to true then daughter of one two is equals to true because second person we are saying bob second person name bob we have given first person's father we made it as bob and first person's gender we made it as true so obviously 
the second person will become the, uh, the father of first person or the first person will become the daughter of second person likewise hopefully all the above rule is correct but it is so specific that is what i said it is so specific that it can rarely in classify future pair of people so this type of specific rules we can't use to predict the future data isn't it future data nu classify cheyadaniki ilanti rules ni manam use cheyalem ee rule deniki applicable avutundi ekkadaithe father name bob untundo and ekkadaithe daughter name uh, daughter female avutundo alanti cases lo maatrame ee particular rule applicable avutundi and vere cases vere case lo father name different ga undochu డాటర్ నేమ్ డిఫరెంట్ గా ఉండొచ్చు అలాంటి కేసు లో మనకి ఈ రూల్ అప్లికేబుల్ అవ్వదు సో హౌ టు జనరలైజ్ దిస్ పర్టికులర్ రూల్ ఓకే ప్రపోజిషనల్ రూల్ ఇన్ ద సెన్స్ వీ నీడ్ టు కన్వర్ట్ ఇట్ ఇన్ టు అ ఫస్ట్ ఆర్డర్ లాజిక్ ఓకే ఆల్ దో ద అబో రూల్ ఈస్ కరెక్ట్ బట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ సో స్పెసిఫిక్ దట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ రేర్లీ ఇన్ క్లాసిఫిక్ ఇన్ క్లాసిఫైంగ్ ఫ్యూచర్ పేర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ రేర్లీ యూజ్ ఇన్ క్లాసిఫైంగ్ ది ఫ్యూచర్ పేర్స్ ఆఫ్ పీపుల్ ద ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఇస్ దాట్ ప్రపోజిషనల్ రిప్రజెంటేషన్ ఆఫర్ no general way okay generalization is missing ma no general way to describe the essential relations among the values of the attributes okay so in contrast a program using first order representation so if we put instead of this propositional logic if we put the first order representations in our program it could learn the following general rule and this first order representation can also be used in uh, identifying the future data classes okay so if father of y comma x so the general notation it will go in a different way but the specific notation it will go in a different way so what he is saying uh, father of y is x how to read this father of y is x and female of y then daughter of x is y so what he is saying uh, how to read it father of y first whatever we have that same thing we need to put father of y is x father of y is x so x is father y is maybe son or maybe daughter so how we are specializing it how we are making y as daughter in the sense by uh, mentioning uh, the gender of y so we are saying female of y so if father of y comma x and if father of y is x and y is a female then obviously what will happen y will become daughter of x isn't it so daughter of x is y that is what we have written over here this is our target concept and if these two things are true if these two things are there in your uh, rules in your uh ex statements whatever you are writing in the program if father of y is e, father of y comma x is there and female of y is also there then automatically what will happen daughter of y comma uh, daughter of x comma y if you test daughter of x is y if you test it will automatically returns true okay more precisely we will see in ai ma these things because practically if we do now how this programming will go practically if we see then it will make sense okay so where x and y are uh, variables <coughs> that can be bound to any person previously the propositional rule was bounded to a specific training example only but now as we have used variables in place of x y x and y we have used variable sorry in place of uh, uh bob and uh, daughter we have used x and y so it can be applied to any of the uh, training example even the future unseen data as well so some of the terminologies they have given ma here uh, by reading it you can easily understand so the first thing is constants okay in our expressions well formed expressions of the uh, uh, first order uh, logic uh, what Uh, formulates how we are uh, writing on classes or first order logics uh, uh, in the sense by following these basics definitions only so in a well formed expression uh, it can be composed of constants uh, that is constants means like names mary joe or any numbers like their ages their telephone numbers and all all those can be considered as constants 
and variables like the way how we have seen in the uh, propositional logic we have seen constants and in the first order logic we have seen the variables and the predicates predicates in the sense the function resemblance resemblances the female uh, or the ancestor daughter father uh, male all these are uh, uh, predicates and functions also there like uh, if you are calculating the age if you are if you want to know the age of a person that age per age less than greater than kind of functions also we can write using the uh, functions in our uh, uh, first order logic okay a term a term is any constant any variable or any function applied to any term which will results to a particular value mark whether either true or false alanti vatini manam terms antamu so uh, sometimes avi uh, oka particular case ki case ni return cheyochu ledha oka particular constant ni kuda return cheyochu so alanti vatini manam such such things we called as uh, the terms okay a literal is any predicate uh, we can even have the negation negation of uh, uh, a predicate so we can call it as a literal applied to any set of terms example in female of mary it is a predicate or literal so not female of x it is also a literal or predicate greater than age of mary 20 so all these are uh, examples of literals or examples of uh, predicates then ground literal is a literal that does not contain any variable so ground literal it will always have the constants only okay a constant uh, a literal or a predicate with constants we call it as a ground literal the negative literal opposite with which will have the negation negated predicate okay a positive literal without any negation okay no negation sign will be there a clause when we call a clause clause in the sense disjunction disjunction of literals you have you are keeping literals you are keeping predicates with all disjunctions between them we call it as a clause and what is han clause something in this form you can see here han clause if you have a particular a uh, statement or if you have a particular uh, thing in your programming in your uh, logic programming uh, something like this h given l1 uh, uh, and and so on uh, and ln all these are literals ma l1 l2 l3 are uh, literals and uh, they form the body they form the Uh, body and we we also call them as antecedents okay these things these particulars are antecedents okay we uh, in in short we can remember as uh, the body from here to here whatever we have between the parentheses we call it as the body uh, or body of the han class or we call it as the antecedents of han class and whatever we have h over here we call it as the head of the han class or consequent of the han class okay hopefully you understood and there is a rule ma we can write the slowly we proceed we will discuss yeah here for any literal a comma b this was uh, this is only i was talking about for any literal a comma b the expression a gives b uh, is equivalent to a or not of b simply what we have to we need to reverse uh, this thing we need to reverse i mean we need to take the negation and put the and 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 negation this is equivalent to and and negation between two uh, literals we can say or this is equivalent to not a and not b this is also one of the rule we need to remember not of a and b if you uh, applies this not to both a and b uh, this and will become or likewise okay so uh, a han class we can convert a complete han class we can complete to like this hr not of l1 not of all literals and h of h uh, hr not of all literals likewise okay we can even have the substitutions in programming uh, in place of x if you want to put any constant value like this you can denote okay so uh, yeah learning set of rules uh, sets of first order rules that is foil first order inductive learner first order inductive learner so a variety of algorithms has been proposed for learning first order uh, rules or han clauses here we consider a program called foil first order inductive learner uh, given by quinlan 
in the year 1990 okay uh, it is also a sequential uh, covering algorithm a kind of similar approach uh, same like your sequential covering and it will also uh, and uh, the learn one rule algorithm as well okay uh, here you can see what we do uh, in learning the hypothesis by using FOIL, first order inductive learner uh, is where each rule is similar to the Horn class with the two exceptions. First, the rule learned by FOIL are more restricted than the general Horn classes because the literals are not permitted to contain function symbols. This reduces the complexity of the hypothesis space search. Second. FOIL, first order inductive learner rule uh, are more expensive than Horn classes, okay, uh, because the literals appearing in the body of the rule may be negated. So, here they have shown the algorithm, first order inductive uh, uh, learner algorithm, uh, you can go through it. So, what it is taking, uh, the target uh, predicate, uh, obviously, the target predicate in the sense the uh, what we call the concept here in our case the concept the outcome the outcome of the given data uh, then it, it takes the predicates so over which it has to work on okay and the data obviously the examples it will take so using the examples it works on the uh, predicates okay predicates are nothing but the given rules it works on the given rules to identify the target predicate, target of the predicate, okay. So, how we are doing? Initially, we are reading all the, we are taking all the uh, positive uh, training examples into a set with the name POS and all the negative examples into a set with the MEG, okay. So, initially, the learned rules is an empty set as you can see, nothing we are keeping in the learned rules and for positive examples, what we are doing? Uh, we are checking whether it is satisfying the uh, 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 positive uh, uh, training target concept target predicate are not and for the negative examples we are following these uh, things and uh, finally we are returning the learned rules okay uh, so this is how the FOIL first order inductive uh, learner algorithm will work so so how the search is being guided in FOIL first order learning rule, how the search is being guided, uh, that also they have given, yes, uh, that uh, um, same that uh, Sharon and uh, Bob example only they have taken. So granddaughter, uh, these are some of the predicates which are considered and uh, from these predicates only based on the given data they will give some training data based on that given training data these uh, uh, predicates will be used in order to identify the target concept and here target concept uh, they are saying target literal they have given granddaughter of x comma y whether uh, x is uh, uh, whether y is granddaughter of x or not that we need to identify and uh, for that uh, they have given all these uh, predicates okay So, recurs uh, recursive rule set. So, when we call a rule as a recursive rule, already I said, if you have a, a, a particular predicate both in a head as well as in the uh, body, okay, if you have a particular predicate both head as well as in the body, uh, then we call that predicate, uh, then we call that complete rule as a recursive rule. Here in the example, the first rule, if you see, uh, if parent of x is y then ancestor of x is y there is no uh, recursion it is a simple statement but when you see the second statement if parent of x is z uh, and ancestor of z is y then ancestor of x is y this is what given and ancestor if you are seeing it is coming in both head as well as in the body so this particular rule is a recursive rule and this is a normal rule that is what the difference between these two even if you read this entire thing you will get the same meaning in the above discussion we ignored the possibility that the new literals added to the rule body could refer to the target predicate itself target predicate itself referring the target predicate itself 
that is the predicate occurring in the rule head so a particular predicate it is coming in the rule head also so here you can see ancestor ane predicate manaku both body as well as head lo kuda undi okay so this particular predicate this particular rule we are calling it as an uh, what we call recursive definition recursive definition of the rule so uh, induction as inverted deduction so generally induction ante manam ela inductive approach ante ela manam sequentially refer cheskuntu veltamo so manam induction ni ela define cheyochu uh, deduction in the sense um, having nothing uh, and adding sorry induction in the sense having nothing and adding step by step that procedure we call it as induction and deduction in the sense having everything and slowly removing one by one unless we left out with the exact thing that is what the deduction okay induction ante em chestam amma initially mana daggara em undadu slowly gradual ga increase increase cheskuntu veltamu and uh, increase chese tappudu whatever is necessary that only we try to add into the concept okay that only we try to add into the concept a, a approach ni mano inductive approach antamu okay there is another approach deductive approach uh, deduction ante enti initially complete uh, thing ni teeskuntam as a solution and uh, edaithe unnecessary avutundo dani slow ga remove cheskuntu potam and adhe process entha varaku repeat chestam ante until and unless we left out with whatever required whatever is necessary solution so that approach ni manam deductive solution antamu so inductive solution ni manam ela chudochu it is an reverse of deduction ga chudochu okay reverse of deduction induction is nothing but reverse of deduction that is what they said over here induction as inverted uh, deduction okay and uh, inverting resolution here also we have a formula so this simple thing you can read out and you can get it uh, very easily okay so with this i am concluding the uh, lecture ma concluding this class so many of the concepts here theoretical concepts some of the concepts uh, required a uh, bit attention so that i have given so uh, hopefully you will go through it you will study the concept and if at all you are getting any doubts you can approach me at any time ma, during your preparation okay uh, thank you students